Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2024 Buick Encore GX all-wheel drive in the Sport Touring trim level. This vehicle sitting on 245-45 Continental tires wrapped around 19-inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Cinnabar Metallic. And it kind of looks like a maroon red color to me. Pretty nice, and it kind of matches the style of the vehicle. Now we do have quite a bit of chrome here in the front and the new emblem, new Buick emblem. Triple shield is what they're calling it. So a pretty wide bezel, chrome bezel around the grill. It does have the active grill shutters as well there and has the ST badging for sport touring. Uh, now there is a camera right here in the center, right there, for the surround view, 360 view camera system. And then there's some gloss black here at the bottom, but just above that is kind of like a gray strip, kind of light gray, silver, that kind of thing, right in there. Now it has the, what well, seems like a, the 2014 Jeep Cherokee started. Uh, and everybody complained about now it's like a trend setting uh, feature where you have a separate daytime running light squinty up here and then the actual headlight down here and it's a projector projector led and now i have a full a full night video of this vehicle uh, so you can check it out there are some pluses and minuses but uh it's pretty interesting you to check that part out looking at the profile that gloss black extends from the front around each wheel well the base base of each door and all the way to the back uh, it kind of blends in with the, the wheels, which are gloss black, and then you have the roof rails gloss black. Uh, but this pillar, unfortunately, right here is just a matte black. Um, so if that was gloss black, it would kind of solidify the glass a little bit better. Usually that's where I like to have gloss black right there is because when you have tinted windows, it kind of solidifies it. Uh, but having a matte black for some reason is just stands out a little bit. Now there is a chrome strip at the top of the glass right here. The upper portion of the side mirrors are gloss black and then it has a body colored handle with a chrome strip on it as well. This is what the key looks like and it's a full proximity key system and it has the new triple badge or triple shield Buick emblem on it as well. It does have remote start, lock, unlock, and a panic button. Panic button just has a has a chirp there. Uh, now, basically, you can use that for, you know, finding the vehicle, uh, like you can't find it in the parking lot, that kind of thing. Uh, but it's a basic, it's a decent uh, key fob. It doesn't, it's kind of smooth. It's not overly heavy or anything like that. It's easy to carry with you. But as long as you have the key with you, uh, you can use the vehicle 100%. Uh, you can walk up and unlock the door by pressing this button or unlock or lock it. So it, it toggles so you have to kind of look here to make sure that you're actually locking it and you're not unlocking it um, so there's that I can unlock it uh, so as long as the keys on the outside of the door it'll sense the key position and allow you to lock and unlock it there's also a physical key location behind this cover right here you take that off and you can use the physical key which is located inside the fob to unlock the door if the battery is dead there's a camera on the underside of each mirror right here uh, and that goes together with that 360 camera system. Now the doors don't go all the way to the bottom, but they do cover up most of the threshold here, area right here, and keeps it clean. It's kind of a wide threshold. Uh, the inside of the passenger door is basically all black. We do have some white stitching right in here. So you can see the white stitching, but all black door. Uh, this is a injection molded soft surface. This is more like a vinyl type soft surface here. Uh, this is enclosed, so you can utilize that as a pocket. It does have a little rubber pad on the inside. And then the rest of the door is a hard touch surface. Now these door pockets are really frustrating because when you put a bottle or anything in there, it's just so wide open that they just kind of fall down and a whole bunch of stuff falls down in there. And it's so deep, um, this area right here. So it goes way down in there. So that's as far down as it goes. So it's really hard to fish stuff out because uh, the way it's angled, it's just kind of hard to get your hand in there. So I uh, need to do something about those door pockets, make it a little bit more user friendly, in my opinion. OK, so there is the threshold area, manually adjusted seats here on the passenger side. These are, these are heated leatherette seats, so it's a simulated leather um, 
seat system. It does have the real fine perforations there in the center, and they're relatively comfortable seats overall. They do get hot in the sun though, since they're black. It has the ST embroidered in the back of the headrest or the front of the headrest there. Can also fold the seat down as well. Pretty good amount of leg room here in the front. A little bit of tapering going on, but not a big deal. Hard touch surfaces here, non-locking glove compartment, smooth plastic on the inside. And then this area right here is kind of like rubbery soft here and here, as well as the dash. Has this little diamond texture here, which looks pretty cool. The opening here in the front, very easy to get in and out of it. Uh, the seat the, the seat height off the ground is nice. You can just easy get in and out. The swing of the door in the front is good. No problems as far as headroom or anything. Uh, the back door, the swing of the door could be a little bit better. Um, we do have a little bit of tapering right here, uh, but the headroom is fine and getting in and out of the back is not a big deal. The inside of the back door, very similar styling where it's just black, uh, the white stitching hard touch surface here instead and then you have the vinyl soft surfaces here pocket there and at the bottom but yeah a little tiny threshold right here uh, but overall it's okay not not a big deal getting in and out it is basically a bench seat um, so you can fold these seats down to add to your cargo space you cannot recline them though it has the place to attach the car seats the latch system uh, they're kind of hidden though because they're right in here so you have to move this flap over and move it like that and then you can expose uh, the bar that attaches here so not you can barely you can feel it but it's not easy to see in there so it's it, it's good at hiding it but maybe not so great at, as functionality I guess so there's some cup holders and armrest there in the center and that lifts up there and you can see the different movement of the seat now that front seat here on this side is all the way back so you can see how much leg room you have left over this is more of a normal position here so you can see the leg room is okay uh, now you can see there is mat pockets on the back of these seats right here and the the leg room is pretty good back here even though there is a hump in the center but uh they kind of put the floor down lower so that way your knees are not sticking up in the air and pretty decent as far as leg room now there is two USB charge ports and a little storage cubby there as well. Taking a look at the top of the vehicle, you can see it's, it's completely gloss black on top, which kind of adds to the heat inside the vehicle. Um, you can kind of feel it in the roof area especially under where the sunroof is. Now it has a little little antenna, little mast antenna there in the center. Uh, third brake light is in the top of the glass right here in this rear spoiler, LED, and a rear wiper as well. Now these are LED taillights, and I do have the night video to show you what they look like. Uh, but they are pretty impressive looking at nighttime. They have like a multiple line uh, sharp LED system and pretty impressive. Has the new Buick badge back here, Encore GX. It lets you know that it is all wheel drive as well. Now the backup camera uh, is right here. It's a little bit offset. Could be in a little bit better position there. Could be in the center, could be in this higher position, but the way they have it, it's okay, I guess. Um, of course, it, like many things on this vehicle, can be improved. Uh, the, a lot of gloss black here in the back and the exhaust tips are actually hidden under the vehicle. Uh, we have these that kind of look a little bit like exhaust tips, but they're just kind of for looks. So you can release uh, the, the lift gate, push that button, it releases it, and you just lift it up. You get about right there, and it lifts it up and holds it for you. So it's not a power lift gate or anything. It does have a removable uh, shade cover right here, cargo cover. A single light here on the left side, and as you'll see in the night video, it's not all that great. So here's the amount of space you'll have if the seats you're occupied with passengers. Uh, it does have some tie downs there, little cubbies there on the side or there on the right side and then this kind of dished in here a little bit uh, but not really a cubby on that side. Now this part lifts up and you have a 
spare tire and tools and a, a lot of additional cargo area down here as well now you can lower this load floor if you need to you just kind of drop it down and then move it back like that so you have a lower low load floor depending on your needs if you have more stuff under the load floor um, then you lift it up but uh, this is kind of like the better position i would say now you can take the shade out lower the seats it's a 60 40 split so you can add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space or you can take it all out fold it both down and uh, have a wide open space back here the fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's not locking you just release it here and it has a capless design so you don't have to worry about a cap uh, coming loose or losing it or anything like that as long as you have the key inside the vehicle just press and hold the brake and press this button here to turn it on here's the floor mat in front of the driver's seat now the floor mat snaps in place here and then you have the accelerator brake pedal and a footrest Let's take a look under the hood. Opening the hood, there's a latch here in the center. Just reach in, move it to the right, and lift up. It's kind of heavy hood, uh, but there's the latch right there. You just move it to the right, you lift up, and there does require a pop to hold it up. So there's the prop there, you lift it up, and you put it right where that arrow is pointing. It does have insulation there under the hood. There's also seals in the front and back of the engine compartment. There is a massive heat shielding there on the back of the engine because that is where the exhaust is and is where the turbocharger. This is a turbocharged engine, um, three cylinder. It's a little tiny engine. And you see the battery is located right here. That has a cover over it, but it is insulated as well. You can get a little bit better view of all the heat shielding back there. Now this is a 1.3 liter, three cylinder engine. So one, two, three cylinders. <laughs> so it's a very small engine, dual overhead cam, uh, direct injection, and it puts out 155 horsepower and 174 pound feet of torque. Now the torque comes in at 1600 RPMs and it's pretty impressive actually. Uh, now, since it's the all-wheel drive, uh, it comes with a 9-speed automatic. If this was the front-wheel drive system, uh, it would be a CVT transmission, so they keep that in mind. The blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert indicators here on the side mirror. It'll illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, so you have the door lock controls, of course, but then you also have the power windows. And the only one that's automatic is the driver driver window. So it's one touch up and down. The rear windows, you do have to hold them, and they do all go all the way down. Side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side and adjust it with this little pad right here. Power seat instead of a manual seat here for the driver. So you can go up, down, tilt, and all that stuff, as well as the two-way lumbar adjustments. And these are heated seats, three-stage heated seats. To the left of the steering column, uh, there's the dimmer switch for the interior gauges, headlight switch, so it has the ability to turn toggle on and off the headlights, automatic parking and headlights on, and it also has a tilt and a telescoping uh, steering column as well. It doesn't have a heads-up display, but it does have a little light that will flash and reflect off the windshield when the Ford collision warning system is activated. Like if you're coming too close to a vehicle or something like that, somebody pulls out in front of you, uh, it will alert you that there's potentially a collision possibility. So it will sound a sound and also illuminate uh, like you know five or six red um, lights there in the actually reflecting off the windshield like a heads-up display. I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I'm six feet tall and I have the seat all the way down and all the way back to give you an idea of the potential legroom here. Now it is a little bit too far back for me to drive this way. Um, so I will need to pull it up a little bit. So if you're a little bit over six feet tall, should be no problem driving this vehicle. It does diminish your room in the back seat, but at least you can drive the vehicle here in the front. So yeah, it does have a lot of just available space here. And also, um, for me, this little area right here kind of gets in the way sometimes, but overall it's just, you know, the, the, the comfiness as far as the leg room and all that stuff is okay. 
The seats are comfortable too. The steering wheel is really comfortable. It has a soft touch surface that has a little give to it. Uh, some vehicles are like, you know, more stiff. This one's nice and soft and comfortable. It doesn't dig into your buns because of that softness. And the thickness is okay, but that softness really does help out. It does have the flat bottom here, the new emblem here on the center of the steering wheel. Now it also has buttons on the back. So there's, uh, there's an up and down button here on the left side to change to the uh, tracks or the radio station, depending on what you're playing here. And on the right side is the volume. So it has an up and down uh, button right here. There's two buttons. And that's how you can control the steering wheel while keeping your hand, uh, or control the volume actually by holding the steering wheel and uh, your butt, your fingers kind of line up with it. It's almost as good as the, uh, the Dodge Ram Jeep uh, system, a little bit you know, it, it, it's good, it's, it, it, it's really good. More manufacturers should have those buttons on the back of the steering wheel, especially for those controls. The buttons on the left of the steering wheel are the cruise control. Uh, so you can turn it on set by pushing this down. So that's set, resume, and then cancel right here. You can also set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you right here. Uh, so when you press it, it says gap adjust. So you can cycle through. When you first press it, it's just gonna display here on the screen then you have to press it again to adjust what you want and then the heated steering wheel is just on or off it does have a indicator light there that it's on though here on the right side voice recognition uh, hang up and answer are separate buttons which is nice you have the answer of the phone hang up here this is for the bluetooth system uh, so once you pair your phone, you can uh, answer a call, and then when you're finished, you can press that button. Now, some vehicles have a single button for both answer and hang up, and what happens, could potentially happen is, you're in a call, and then somebody else is calling right after you're about, right when you're going to hang up with that person, you press the button to hang up, it actually answers the other call, and you don't know it, and they're listening in on you, that kind of thing. Um, so having a separate button to actually hang up the phone uh, I really like that they have that. Now this scroll wheel right here, and then you press into this wheel, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. It just has a little bit of different views here on the screen. Windshield wiper controls are here for the front and back. And then the turn signals here. It also has the button to turn on the automatic high beams as well. So the gauge is basically a screen and it's kind of smaller than what you might think because it looks like it kind of fades in. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Uh, to the rest of the, the bezel is huge and then it has this little screen in the middle of it and and then and then the screen itself is the information is kind of scattered here so uh, we have the the fuel gauge engine coolant temperature uh, the range the vehicle can drive the fuel is what that little fuel indicator there is the odometer um, and then it shows the direction the vehicle's facing here, digital compass. Uh, there's also the, of course, the speedometer. This is probably the best part is the big digital speedometer. Everything else is kind of scattered around. It has this needle right here. You can change the look a little bit, uh, but, and then you have some status of some safety features here. Uh, but the way that it's designed is just not very intuitive and it just kind of like I don't know, it just doesn't take advantage of a full digital screen, in my opinion. There's no colors, it's very dark. Um, you, I mean, you might as well just have white letters popping out in the black background and, and just just keep it to the basics because trying to add a little style to it, it just doesn't seem to work, in my opinion. Okay, so if we wanna change the look, we can press and hold this button here. When we let go, um, then you have these options. So we have gauge one, let's look at gauge two. And so now we have the RPM tachometer here and that is the speedometer. It's not a huge difference though. You can see it separates the, um, the, the fuel gauge and stuff, but it's not like a huge difference. It's not like it fills in the screen or adds any kind of substantial color or anything like that. Press and hold the button, uh, the wheel here. When we let go, we can go down here to vehicle info. We select that and then we can see what's on the screen. I mean, the battery voltage is all it's showing right now. Um, press and hold, go to infotainment, 
and it just shows you whatever's playing on your radio. So these things, once you select them, that's what it's going to show on the screen, and that's it. Like it's 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 not like you can quickly scroll through. You have to press and hold the scroll wheel, and then. Like, I can hold it for like 10 minutes, so nothing's gonna happen. I have to know how long to hold it and then let go. And when I let go is when it pops up. So it doesn't, I don't really know when it's, you know, I don't know, it's five seconds, three seconds, I don't know. Uh, but you do have to hold it down for briefly and then you let go is when you find out whether you've held it long enough. Uh, so the next option here is clean. Uh, so this is that clean look here. So that's another slightly different look uh, not not drastically look different pressing and holding let go all right let's try that again press and hold it longer let go all right so now and then we we'll go back to the beginning so the we have gauge one gauge two and then past these options we have clean uh, and those are just additional information that you can have there in the center so we'll go back to the original gauge one uh, so yeah in my opinion this this system could have been better the controls could have been better and um, the look could be better you know when you're dealing with a full digital screen you, the sky's the limit I mean you can have all kinds of cool stuff there but um, it just seems like it's kind of scattered on the screen and not really logical on where it's placed uh, it's like just you know you take some items and you throw it on the table and you just got to scatter on the table and it seems like there's not much logic to it uh, you know, that, that kind of thing. Another thing is, typically, the lane keep assist button will be in here, and most vehicles will have it grouped in with the uh, the cruise control, the adaptive cruise control. But that's it's not even there. It's way over here. It's right there. Can you see it? Oh, you can't see it because the shifter's in the way. All right, so that's another thing. There's some stuff. Uh, it's right there, so it's dis completely disconnected where it would normally be, and then it's um, it's obscured, uh, just like the start button. You see it? You can't see it. Can you see the volume knob? No, you can't see the volume knob. The volume knob is here behind the steering wheel, and then the power button's there. All right. So the the windshield, the the the, <laughs> the uh, headlight control. Well, it's over here, so you have to go over here and get to that and the dimmer switch is there. So there's a lot of things that are obscured, like it's almost intentionally obscured. Like why would you put the volume knob here if you don't want it obscured by the, it's like they put it there specifically just to hide it behind the steering wheel. It's a very strange spot to put it to begin with. And then the shifter, you know, I don't know. It seems like there's some things that could be refined for sure. Okay, so the touch screen over here, um, once we get the style, the size of the screen is okay. Uh, but the style is very dark and there's and even these lines like some of these icons are just not very uh, visible especially when the sun's shining in your face or something like that uh, this this screen definitely needs a software improvement for sure so it has these icons this one's for the radio and there are different audio sources it does have the the wireless apple carplay android auto and uh, for me, the only time I would use Android Auto uh, is if I need the navigation system or something like that. But it does have that AM, FM, satellite radio, Bluetooth, and then you can, of course, add devices there. And then there's your phone. You can manage phones there. Uh, this button uh, goes into different information about the maintenance. Right here, tire pressure, brake pad life. Um, we can reset the tire pressure there. And then we have different gauges. Let's go them back to the maintenance because you can scroll through and get you click right here on the arrow and it gives you more information, like so. You can reset that. All right, gauges. Uh, we can have the battery voltage, the coolant temperature, and then we can choose which one of these show and cluster. So you remember when we had the option to have the information on the screen? Uh, then we. This is how you choose what you want to have there cooling temperature we can have that instead if we wanted to and then we have a trip over here once again this is disconnected uh, from the screen typically trip will be here on the screen um, but we have that information here and we can have two different trips we can also show it in a cluster if we want to uh, but of course that takes away from the other things we could have had 
fuel economy and get that information here. We can show that in a cluster if we want. All right, and then here's the trip at the end. There's the gauges there, and then there's the maintenance. All right, so that's the little check uh, icon. This is the home button, and it basically just takes you to these icons here, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. We can go into settings, we can hit the camera, or we can have Wi-Fi. Now the camera is really handy, and I wish that button for the camera was a physical button that I can access all the time, so I don't have to be in this screen. So if I'm an Android Auto, or if I'm anywhere, uh, I, I don't have access to that camera button. And that camera button is really handy. When we hit, when we hit the camera button here, um, we have a top-down view, and then we have a, in this case, a front view because we're not in reverse. When we're in reverse, we can get a reverse view. Um, so it has that 360 camera system, and you can see now it doesn't fill in the screen. The screen actually comes down to right here. Uh, so it's kind of like this smaller segment of the screen. They could have filled it out and filled up the full screen. Uh, so the edge of the screen is right here, but yet the, you know, so anyways, there's a lot of information that could have been bigger. I'm not sure why they made it small. But anyways, there's the top down, and then we have different views here. We can have the front view, the back view. We can have different views here, like so. We can have the top down view here, or top down back. And then we can have the side views, front or back. So it has, it's really handy, and we're gonna turn the active guidelines off. Uh, we can also turn off uh, the top-down view if we don't want to see it and we want to just focus on uh, this view right here. So yeah, it's active guidelines as a turn the steering wheel. Um, you can see the lines move there to give us the estimated trajectory. But, but yeah, this camera system is excellent. Uh, but the fact that they didn't make it bigger to fill the whole screen, um, because, okay, so the screen goes from here to right where my finger is, is the actual edge of the screen, here to here. So they could have scaled this up to fill in that screen. I, it, it doesn't make any sense. Because when you're back here and you're, and you're looking, um, it just makes it, you can see it, but it would, you can see it better if it was bigger, you know? So um, that's, that's one thing that I would, you know, some feedback there uh, for them. But yeah, the home screen is very, very basic. It doesn't have a lot of stuff. And then you have some icons that are basically, uh, you know, gives you the main uh, features there. We do have the outside temperature and a digital clock. Once again, tiny clock there, and it's on the far side, and we're driving, and it's way over there. At least it's in the same spot, but having, taken advantage of the size of your screen is just seems to be, you know, in this particular screen, it does go to the edge here. Um, but there's a lot of black areas. There's no colors. The the icons are very thin black and white um, I mean we have a color screen so Wireframe may not be the best option for today's standards Okay, I'll move on from there uh, four-way flashers are here climate control now I was kind of shocked because when I got in this vehicle I was looking to set the temperature and Put it on automatic and uh, like I do with all other vehicles and modern vehicles um, now this is a what they're calling a premium vehicle a premium uh, I was reading through the through the, uh, the the literature here and it's a premium compact SUV and the the person the people the, the Buick basically said that they're uh, they made this vehicle so good that they're putting other ve other manufacturers on notice right as a premium vehicle uh, so the fact that I that I don't have an automatic temperature, I have a manual temperature control on the, on the climate settings here, is uh, seems surprising to me. I was kind of surprised. Like I'm I'm overlooking something. There's some there's some uh, uh, there's something that I'm overlooking. There's a button somewhere or whatever. But no, it's just you set the temperature manually here by just guesstimating, and then the fan speed manual and then you just roll with it. Now it does have heated seats, three-stage heated seats for the front driver and passenger. You can manually, where you weren't there to blow the manual, front and rear defrosters there. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's okay. I mean, it works good. Uh, you just have to fiddle with it more often. But uh, but yeah, that's, that's another thing. Uh, 12 volt power supply here, USB-C and USB regular. It does have a wireless charge pad here, which works really well. And it secures the phone um, and it's rubberized there on the bottom. And even with my phone case, no problem with charging uh, my cell phone anyway. Now we have the buttons right here. Uh, let me move the shifter back. You turn off the stop start feature here. All wheel drive is manual. Like you have to turn it on. Like it's an all wheel drive vehicle, but it doesn't automatically engage. So if you need, if you think you might need all wheel drive, then you have to turn it on here. Uh, same thing with the lane keep assist. That's a manual, you turn it on here. Um, and then the traction control default is on. You can turn that off if you need to spin tires. And then right here, the more visible areas in which buttons could be, um, they're blank. So there's nothing there. There's cup holders, electronic parking brake here. Lift it up to engage, to push it down, hold the brake over here and push down to disengage. Now it engages the front wheels. Some vehicles engage the rear wheels. This one engages the front wheels. Okay, so here's the shifter. And when you put it in reverse, of course, the camera pops up, which we saw. It's basically the same system, except for now we're showing the, view, the rear view there. Neutral drive and then it has that low range and it also has the ability to while you're in drive to shift through or or downshift and upshift here uh, using this button so the when you're going down hills so this one is the all-wheel drive so it has the regular transmission it doesn't have the CVT even in the CVT you still need potentially need to you know downshift if you're going down hills or something like that uh, so it does give you the control to um, you know, the ability to control manually uh, some level of a gear ratio basically there's a storage area here and this is pretty convenient to put a cell phone or something it does have a rubberized uh, floor here at the bottom uh, but it, basically this is a nice spot when you get in the vehicle you could put your cell phone there passenger could put their cell phone uh, you can you know, basically put anything in there quickly and, and access it quickly. It's a really good little pocket. It's a little bit more convenient than this part here. Now this is the armrest, kind of rubbery soft, kind of small. Uh, not gonna be sharing it with your passenger really. But it does have a latch. It is latched down and it's solid. It doesn't rattle. When you release it and you lift it up, it could still flop down. So it doesn't really hold itself up. You have to pull it all the way back and then it'll stay there. And it has this little quick access area which is nice right here at the top. Uh, but it kind of gets in the way. You kind of have to get it out of the way. And it's kind of big and sometimes it's not easy to pull out of there. Um, you know, some. I mean, it's okay, but uh, it just kind of completely blocks the actual area here, which is down here. Um, it's kind of like a dark abyss because there's no lights or anything. So I put my business cards in there so you can see the depth. So it is a nice, basically out of the way type cargo area um, and then this is like a little quick access area now typically you would junk up the one below so having a little quick access one is nice and then this one is even nicer here rear view mirror has manual day and night mode it does have on star for roadside assistance tap lights you can turn on all the lights turn them all off or have them turn on uh, with the door here on the center part. This is for the sunroof. We'll get to that in just a minute. There's a button to open it and there's also a shade here as well. And then there, the visors have a cloth, very, just like the headliner. It's the same cloth type material. It's a little bit smoother and like a microfiber type cloth that it matches in color. And we have some really nice lights here. Nice and soft, they don't blind you. And you're on both sides of the mirror. So that way you're not casting a big shadow on your nose, that kind of thing. Same thing on the on the passenger side, of course. Uh, now this visor extends out like this and it does a pretty decent job of covering up uh, and there's also a clip on the other side as well so let's take a look at the sunroof um, I can feel the heat coming through here uh, this sunroof has a, a shade that covers hundred percent of the light uh, but the Sun the, 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 the Sun is, is like heating up this whole section usually I can't feel this much heat here in the headliner area but this one is really really warm and I got the air conditioner on so it's cool down here but as I've moved my hand up I can really feel the heat building up 
Um, so there's two buttons here. The one on the right side is for the shade. So you press that. And then there's the shade. And you can see it's the panoramic style sunroof. So this button to the left is the one that can slide it back. Let's press it again. All right, as far back as it goes. All right, press it forward. And then of course we can close the shade. So I do like the fact that it blocks the light, um, but I wish there was some kind of you know, way of reflecting the heat back out, not building it up, because I can really feel that heat build up uh, on the top of my head, and as I raise my hand, it's like really hot there. Looking at the visibility here in the back, um, it, those pillars are quite wide, uh, but I really haven't had an issue with visibility. Um, it does have the blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert, excellent camera system, and it has the, you know, all the technology to help you drive the vehicle safely. Uh, so really in this particular case with those, even though they're, the pillars there are wide, it's not really a big deal. It's pretty interesting driving a three cylinder vehicle. Um, but I'm kind of surprised that the fuel economy isn't better. It's a little bit, not quite as good as say my Dodge Challenger. <laughs> which has a V6 and weighs about uh, 800 pounds heavier. So, not sure what that is all about. I, I, it seems like a common thing where they have these small displacement engines and, and then they boost them a lot with the turbo and all that stuff, but they don't really get the power and the fuel economy than that a regular large, larger displacement engine. Maybe I'm wrong, but it just seems like a, it's like a pattern here where you get lower fuel economy even though you have a smaller engine <laughs> and, 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 a, and, a, and a lighter vehicle too. It has a little roar to it. You can hear the engine rev and it sounds pretty good. And it feels good too with the nine speed automatic transmission. I haven't driven the CVT yet. But the nine speed feels good and it feels kind of impressive, especially considering you're driving a three cylinder engine. So yeah, it's, it's not lacking in power really, uh, as far as a vehicle to zip around town, uh, highway driving, all that stuff. I hadn't had a problem with it. It is pretty, fairly pr fun to drive vehicle. You know, there's a couple, couple drawbacks here and there. But I think, you know, as long as people are aware of the drawbacks, some of the drawbacks, uh, then I think that a lot of people could enjoy this vehicle and be very useful. Because of the style with the hatchback and the back seats and, you know, the height off the ground and uh, decent fuel economy. And if you like the looks and you like Buick in general, then, uh, then yeah, this, this is pretty good. So yeah, you can hear that little engine revving. It's pretty cool. The cruise control system, even at the furthest distance that I have it set, is still a little bit too close. I wish there was a little bit more of an adjustment there for the adaptive cruise control, uh, but overall not too bad. Lane keep assist system basically just lets you get over the line and then just kind of jerks the steering wheel. Uh, it's not the kind that follows the line, um, but, you know, it's just a different type of system. Now, they're calling it a lane, a key, a lane a assist system, so, you know, it will turn the steering wheel. It just kind of waits for you to go over the line, and then it just kind of jerks it back, that kind of thing. kind of bounces back and forth, which is fine, because it's, it's the type of system that's not fighting you all the time. Some systems that try to follow the line, they kind of fight you. So this one allows you to drive the vehicle, which is nice. The way you want to drive it. I'd say it's relatively smooth, quiet, and comfortable overall. 
There's not a lot of road noise. There's not a lot of exterior noise getting through. A little bit of wind noise, but uh, you know, if you're playing the radio or anything like that, uh, then it kind of drowns a lot of that out. Uh, you can certainly have a conversation with somebody without raising your voice, that kind of thing. Okay, so we're going about 64 or 65 miles per hour. And once again, no problem getting up to that speed and other than people getting in my way. Um, and just holding it there and, and cruising along with the nine speed transmission. It tends to feel fine. It doesn't feel like it's struggling. And it's a relatively smooth ride for the type of vehicle that we're dealing with.